Christmas quiet. Blessed is our God, always now and ever, and unto ages of Asia. Amen. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us, O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities, O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O come, let us worship God, our King. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ, our King and our God. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ Himself, our King and our God. Hearken, O Lord, unto my righteousness, attend unto my supplication. Give ear unto my prayer, which cometh not from deceitful lips. From before thy face let my judgment come forth, let mine eyes behold thy brightness. Thou hast proved my heart, thou hast visited it in the night. Thou hast tried me by fire, and unrighteousness was not found in me. That my mouth might not speak of the works of men, for the sake of the words of thy lips have I kept the ways that are hard. Set my footsteps in thy path, that my steps may not be shaken. I have cried, for thou hast hearkened unto me, O God, incline thine ear unto me, and hearken unto my words. Let thy mercies be made wonderful, O thou who savest them that hope in thee. From them that have resisted thy right hand, keep me, O Lord, as the apple of thine eye. In the shelter of thy wings wilt thou shelter me from the face of the ungodly which have oppressed me. Mine enemies have surrounded my soul, they have enclosed themselves with their own fat, their mouth has spoken pride. They that cast me out have now encircled me, they have set their eyes to look askance on the earth. They have taken me as mighty lion, ready for his prey, and as mighty lion's walk that dwelleth in hiding. Arise, O Lord, overtake them and trip their heels. Deliver my soul from ungodly men, thy sword from the enemies of thy hand. O Lord, from thy few do thou separate them from the earth in their life. Yea, with thy hidden treasures hath their belly been filled. They have satisfied themselves with swine, and have left the remnants to their babes. But as for me in righteousness shall I appear before thy face, I shall be filled when thy glory is made manifest to me. Unto thee, O Lord, have I lifted up my soul. O my God, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be put to shame, nor let mine enemies laugh me to scorn. Yea, let none that wait on thee be put to shame. Let them be ashamed which are lawless without a cause. Make thy ways, O Lord, known unto me, and teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth, and teach me, for thou art God my Savior, for on thee have I waited all the day long. Remember thy compassions, O Lord, and thy mercies, for they are from everlasting. The sins of my youth and thine ignorances remember not. According to thy mercy remember thou me for the sake of thy goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will they set a law for them that sin in the way. He will guide the meek in judgment, he will teach the meek his ways. All the ways of the Lord are mercy and truth unto them that seek after his covenant and his testimony. For the sake of thy name, O Lord, be gracious unto my sin, for it is great. Who is the man that feareth the Lord? He will set him a law in the way which he hath chosen. His soul shall dwell among good things, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The Lord is the strength of them that fear him, and his covenant shall be manifested unto them. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he it is that will draw my feet out of the snare. Look upon me and have mercy on me, for I am one only begotten and poor. The afflictions of my heart are multiplied. Bring me out from my necessities. Behold my lowliness and my toil, and forgive all my sins. Look upon mine enemies, for they are multiplied, and with an unjust hatred have they hated me. Keep my soul and rescue me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have hoped in thee. The innocent and the upright have cleaved unto me, for I have waited on thee, O Lord. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his afflictions. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy compassion. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I know mine iniquity and my sin is ever before me. 
Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil before thee, that thou mightest be justified in thy words and prevail when thou art judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sins did my mother bear me. For behold, thou hast loved truth, the hidden and secret things of thy wisdom hast thou made manifest unto me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with hyssop, and I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones that be humbled, they shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and with thy governing spirit establish me. I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall turn back unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, my tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For if thou hast desired sacrifice, I had given it with burnt offerings, thou shalt not be pleased. A sacrifice unto God with a broken spirit, a heart that is broken and humbled, God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, in thy good pleasure and design, and let the walls of Jerusalem be builded. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. When the women disciples of the Lord learned from the angel the joyous message of thy resurrection, they cast away the ancestral curse and elatedly told the apostles, Death is overthrown. Christ God is risen, granting the world great mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the middle of the feast, O Savior, fill my thirsting soul with the waters of piety as thou cried to all. If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. O Christ God, fountain of our life, glory to thee. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages, amen. O Theotokos, thou art the true vine that hath blossomed forth for us the fruit of life. Thee do we supplicate, intercede, O Lady, together with the holy apostles, that our souls find mercy. Blessed is the Lord God, blessed is the Lord day by day. The God of our salvation shall prosper us along the way. Our God is the God of salvation. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us, O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities, O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Thine are the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. The Samaritan woman came to the well in faith. She saw thee, the water of wisdom, and drank abundantly. She inherited the kingdom on high, and is ever glorified. Lord have mercy, 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 O Christ God, Lord, long-suffering, plenteous in mercy, most compassionate, who lovest the righteous and has mercy on sinners, who callest all to salvation through the promise of good things to come. Receive, O Lord, our prayers at this hour and guide our life toward thy commandments. Sanctify our souls, make chaste our bodies, correct our thoughts, purify our intentions, and deliver us from every sorrow, evil, and pain. Compass us about with thy holy angels, that guarded and guided by their array. We may attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of thy unapproachable glory. Lord, blessed art thou unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. 
more honorable than the cherubim, the unfair more glorious than the seraphim, who without corruption gave us first to God the word, the very tale shall proceed to be magnified. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. Lord, be merciful unto us, and the light of thy countenance shine upon us, and have mercy Amen. O Master God, the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and O Holy Spirit, one God had one power. Have mercy on me, a sinner, and by the judgments which thou knowest, save me, thine unworthy servant, for blessed art thou in the ages of ages. Amen. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. O God, in thy name save me, and in thy strength do thou judge me. O God, hearken unto my prayer, give ear unto the words of my mouth. For strangers are risen up against me, and mighty men have sought after my soul, and have not set God before themselves. For behold, God helpeth me, and the Lord is the protector of my soul. He will bring evils upon mine enemies. Utterly destroy them by thy truth. Willingly shall I sacrifice unto thee. I will confess thy name, O Lord, for it is good. From out of every affliction hast thou delivered me, and mine eye have looked down upon mine enemies. Give ear, O God, unto my prayer, and disdain not my supplication, attend unto me, and hear me. I was grieved in my meditation, and I was troubled at the voice of the enemy, and at the oppression of the sinner. Because they have turned iniquity upon me, and with wrath were they angry against me. My heart is troubled within me, and the terror of death has fallen upon me. Fear and trembling are come upon me, and darkness hath covered me. And I said, Who will give me wings like a dove, and I will fly and be at rest? Lo, I have fled afar off, and have dwelt in the wilderness. I waited for God that saveth me from faint-heartedness and from tempest. Plunge them into the depths, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen iniquity and gainsaying in the city. Day and night they go round about her upon her walls. Iniquity and toil and unrighteousness are in the midst of her. And usury and deceit have not departed from her streets. For if mine enemy had reviled me, I might have endured it. And if he that hateth me had spoken boastful words against me, I might have hid myself from him. But thou, as was, O man of like soul with me, my guide and my familiar friend, thou who together with me did sweeten my repast, in the house of God I walked with thee in oneness of mine. Let death come upon such ones, and let them go down alive into Hades. For wickedness is in their dwellings, and it breaks the death. As for me unto God have I cried, and the Lord hearkened unto me. Evening, morning, and noonday will I tell of it, and will declare it, and he will hear my voice. He will redeem my soul in peace from them that draw nigh unto me, for they among many were with me. God will hear, and he will humble them, he that is before the ages. And for to them there is no requital, because they have not feared God. He has stretched forth his hand in retribution. They have defiled his covenant, they were scattered by the wrath of his countenance, and their hearts have convened. Their words were smoother than oil, and yet they are dark. Cast thy care upon the Lord, and he will nourish thee, he will never permit the righteous to be shaken. But thou, O God, shalt bring those men down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. But as for me, O Lord, I will hope in thee. He that dwelleth in the help of the Most High shall abide in the shelter of the God of heaven. He shall say unto the Lord, Thou art my helper and my refuge. He is my God, and I will hope in him. For he shall deliver thee from the snare of the hunters and from every troubling word. With his shoulders will he overshadow thee, and under his wings shalt thou have hope. With a shield will his truth encompass thee, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the thing that walketh in darkness, nor for the mishap and demon of noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but unto thee shall it not come nigh. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold, and thou shalt see the reward of sinners. For thou, O Lord, art my hope, thou madest the most high thy refuge. No evil shall come nigh thee, and no scourge shall draw nigh unto thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. On their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Upon the asp and the basilisk shalt thou tread, and thou shalt trample upon the lion and dragon. For he hath set his hope on me, and I will deliver him. I will shelter him, because he hath known my name. He shall hearken unto me, and I will... He shall cry unto me, and I will hearken unto him. I am with him in affliction, and I will rescue him and glorify him. With length of days will I satisfy him, and I will show him my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
When the women disciples of the Lord learn from the angel the joyous message of thy resurrection, they cast away the ancestral curse and belatedly told the apostles, Death is overthrown, Christ God is risen, granting the world great mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the middle of the feast, O Savior, fill my thirsting soul with the waters of piety, as thou cried to all. If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. O Christ God, fountain of our life, glory to thee. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages, amen. Seeing that we have no boldness on account of our many sins, do thou beseech him that was born of thee, O Virgin Theotokos. For the supplication of a mother availeth much to win the Master's favor. Disdain not the prayers of sinners, O all pure one, for merciful and mighty to save is he who deigned also to suffer for our sake. Let thy compassions quickly go before us, O Lord, for we are become exceedingly poor. Help us, O God, our Savior, for the sake of the glory of thy name. O Lord, deliver us and be gracious unto our sins for thy name's sake. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us, O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities, O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. The mine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages. Ages. Amen. Christ God, the Creator and Master of all, cried to all in the midst of the Feast of the Law, Come and draw the water of immortality. We fall before thee and faithfully cry, Grant us thy mercies, for thou art the fountain of our life. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Thou who at all times and at every hour in heaven and on earth art worshipped and glorified, O Christ God, who art long suffering, plenteous in mercy, most compassionate, who lovest the righteous and has mercy on sinners, who callest all to salvation through the promise of good things to come, receive, O Lord, our prayers at this hour and guide our life toward thy commandments. Sanctify our souls, make chaste our bodies, correct our thoughts. Purify our intentions and deliver us from every sorrow, evil, and pain. Compass us about with thy holy angels that guarded and guided by their array. We may attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of thine unapproachable glory. For blessed art thou unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare more glorious than the seraphim who without corruption gave us birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos thee do we magnify. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. O God and Lord of hosts and maker of all creation, who by the tender compassion of thy mercy which transcendeth comprehension, did send down the only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the salvation of our race, and by his precious cross did scare us under the hand of
loving God, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Christ is risen from the dead, earthly and dead, and upon the in the tomb bestowing life. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon us in the tombs bestowing life. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon us in the tombs bestowing
Thou art a good God who lovest mankind, and unto thee do we send up glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
Sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. Sing praises to our God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. Clap your hands, all peoples, shout to God with loud songs of joy. Sing praises to our God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. Sing praises to our God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. Wisdom. The reading from the Acts of the Holy Apostles. Let us attend. In those days. The apostles who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews. And some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Then news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. 
When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And it came to pass that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch, then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they also did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. And to thy spirit, in the fourth tone, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Prosper and reign for the sake of meekness, righteousness, and truth. For thou lovest righteousness and dost hate iniquity. Master Hain will proclaim to let tidings the holy apostle and evangelist John. Hey God, through the prayers of the holy glorious, all audible apostle and evangelist John, able to proclaim the glad tidings of great power and fulfillment of the gospel of his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, wisdom, let us attend, let us hear the holy gospel. Peace be unto all. Gospel according to St. John. Glory to thee, o Lord. Glory to thee. At that time, Jesus came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of, of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up unto everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you know now is not your husband, in that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet, our fathers worship on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, 
the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for the salvation is of the Jews. For the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, and who is called Jeet, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. At this point, his disciples came, and they marveled that he talked with a woman, yet no one said, What do you see, or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city and said to the man, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Therefore the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say, There are still four months, and then come the harvest? Behold, I say to you, Lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life that both he who sows and he who recaps, who, he, he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored, others have labored, and you have entered unto their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days, and many more believed because of his own word. Then he said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that it, this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. He's been disciplined by time. Glory to Thee, O Lord, glory to Thee. Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. It's always a uh, powerful experience, isn't it, uh, brothers and sisters, to listen to this gospel reading on this fifth Sunday of Pascha. With the Feast of Pentecost uh, not too far off, although last week we, last week during the midweek, we celebrated the Feast of Mid Pentecost. We know the story well. This woman comes to the well around, uh, rather our Lord comes to the well and meets a woman around the sixth hour, which is noon or so. And his apostles have gone into the city to buy food and so he remains there and along comes this woman uh, from Samaria. This is Jacob's well, the well uh, historically where uh, Jacob fed his flocks and so it really is a symbol of life for this local, this local town. And so uh, along she comes doing a, a daily task, you know, of, of taking her, 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 her jar, her pot, and lowering it into the well and, and drawing the water for the day. And Jesus at that point, as we know, says, please uh, uh, give me a drink. And, uh, and she's surprised because uh, in principle, in those days at least, uh, 
not that bad, is it? Uh, Jews didn't talk to Samaritans. Uh, the Samaritan, uh, uh, at that point, the Samaritan location was, was between uh, the northern and the southern part of Israel, Galilee to the north and, and uh, Judea to the south. And uh, the appearance of the Samaritans is a long story, but it, has, it goes all the way back to the Babylonian captivity and what happened when the Jews returned. Uh, but one way or the other, they felt as though they were different and they separated themselves uh, from the main line uh, church, the main line temple, and believed that the place of worship, God's presence, was in uh, the temple in Samaria. Uh, and so it uh, became a source of, of friction. And so she was surprised because of this, uh, of, of this uh, situation that Jesus even uh, spoke with her. Although we hear about uh, the, the Samaritan uh, in other, other contexts within the gospel, especially uh, the, the parable of the Good Samaritan. So it's obvious and evident that our Lord doesn't share in this kind of uh, prejudice towards them. And in fact, he's very willing to talk with this, uh, this woman. So a dialogue uh, uh, goes, goes forth, and uh, this is what's really interesting, because uh, he, uh, he says to her, if you knew who it was that was asking, uh, asking you for a cup of water, you would have asked for a living water. And uh, Jesus, uh, she doesn't quite know what this means exactly, Although she understands, uh, let's say this about this woman, she has a, a depth of understanding. She's been through uh, quite a bit in her life, five relationships that didn't work out, so to speak. And so, like all of us, after we get beaten down enough and try to do the same thing over and over again, thinking it's going to work out, you know, what does she do? Uh, she's finally ready to listen, to really listen to what the Lord has to say to her. And so she says, well, I want this living water. And uh, it's, it's really important. Uh, and Jesus says to her, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, this water being the well, of the, the, well, the well water. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. The water that I shall give him will become a spring of water welling up, welling up into eternal life. And she says back to him, sir, Give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Okay, so she understands what he's talking about, and that is the water of eternal life. You know, Jesus says in another uh, instance during the Feast of the Tabernacles, later on in the Gospel of John, on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and proclaimed, if anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow living waters. And it says later on, of course, that he was talking about the Holy, the Holy Spirit, right? So all of this uh, is, is understandable to this woman. She has an open heart, a heart that desires to hear, to listen, and to understand. And she's very much ready to receive, to receive God. The, the thing about this is that after the conversation is over, people ask oftentimes, well, what is it like to receive the Holy Spirit? You know, and that's, that's a, a very difficult question to answer. Except that here's one example. After this conversation is over, she has received God. She has received the Holy Spirit. And what does she do? She leaves her water pot there, the symbol of not so much living water, but water that we need to, to live by. And she goes back into the city, and what does she do? She starts to tell everyone about who she just met. She starts to evangelize, in effect, and they come out and meet with Jesus and are equally, equally convinced. And so this is a long line of sayings within the gospel, exchanges within the gospel, which tell us that if, if, if we want to understand and live within the power of God, we have to go a little bit deeper. We have to go into the well a little bit deeper like this Samaritan woman does. We have to set aside our preconceptions that constantly say, well, that doesn't make sense, you know. That doesn't make any sense to me. Or, you know, I'm busy. Just don't, don't bother me right now. I don't have time to really stop and, and, and contemplate these things. But Jesus says even later on in this reading, 
uh, when, the, when the apostles want him to eat, you know, because they want to get food from the city, uh, Jesus says to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. So everything that we get, in a sense, in a physical sense, water, food, is transformed by our Lord into the food of salvation. And that's why when we come to church, uh, certainly every Lord's Day, every Sunday, every feast day, and we see how important the feasts were to our Lord too, because he tended to go when the feasts to, to Jerusalem, he tended to go when the feasts were, were uh, being held. But the, uh, the whole idea here is that that's why we receive the body and blood of Christ in the form of what? In the form, initial form of bread and wine. So my food is to do the will of him who sent me, you know. Man does not live by bread alone, Jesus says after being in the desert for 40 days, but by what? Every word that comes from the mouth of God. So this is our spiritual, this is what feeds our souls. And, and the problem is a lot of the time we, 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 we know this, we understand it, but we don't take sufficient time to allow this to occur. This is why regular prayer, very simple, doesn't have to go on for hours, you know, is so important. Regular reading of the scriptures, just contemplating on the word of God, integrating our day with this presence this word of God that is given to us okay so it's interesting also that overwhelmed by what Jesus says this woman leaves the natural the the the, the, the source for her of natural water the water pot you know which she normally needs for her, you know for those around her and for herself uh, just leaves it at the well empty and goes back spreading word of this living water of this living water which this man, this Messiah, because she identifies him as the Messiah, is, about, is, is giving everyone else. Uh, we have to really be careful, brothers and sisters, uh, of the well from which we drink, all right? What we fill our minds and our hearts with. This is really important. And boy, there's a lot competing. And I can understand why there's kind of a a real rush to kind of believe every every imaginable theory that you you can you can watch on a website these days, and that is because that is because if we absent ourselves from the well of living water, that is what Christ gives us, we're open to anything. We're sitting ducks. We really are, and we don't want to be that way, do we? We're not that way. You're not that way, or you wouldn't be here, right? Yes. You're not that way. We're not that way, or we wouldn't be here. Thanks be to God for that. You know, it's kind of nice to stand here and say that, look outside and see the trees and the, and the brown grass and, and, and look back about how we sort of got through this past year worshiping sometimes in the cold, you know, in the rain. It wasn't that hard, really, was it, given, given the blessings that are given. But nevertheless, let us be careful of the, of the well, of the well from which we drink. And there's lots of these kind of fake wells around, you know, starting with, well, there's three areas, really. One is the passions. One is, is being entertained by all sorts of nutty stuff. And, and, uh, and one is gluttony, right? Those are the three major things that'll get you. But we don't want to drink from those wells. We want to, in fact, drink from the water of life. This is why we are baptized in this water of life. And we come out, we die to the old self, the old man, and we come out, we come out renewed. This is why we, we baptize, in a sense, our, our homes with this very same water, as if to say, this living water, make this living water, make, make my home, my abode, a living offering back to you. You know, take everything I have and let me offer it back. Let me offer it back. Because if we're not taking what we have and offering it back, then what are we doing? We're kind of like, you know, the Grinch. I got it, you know, and, and I, I, I want to offer it, but on the other hand, I, uh, so we, we want to live in two worlds in the, uh, at once, you know, one foot in the kingdom and one foot in, uh, in, in regular everyday life. I know this struggle is hard, and sometimes it's hard to distinguish between what we need and what we should, in fact, offer to others. But start with the understanding, the first things go to God, then we're okay, you know. Then, then we're okay. Offer the first things to God, and then we're okay. Can I end with kind of a a hokey story uh, to kind of illustrate uh, what, I'm, what I've been saying here? The, the woman thirsts. 
doesn't she? She thirsts for the kingdom. She, she's, she's made all sorts of bad decisions all of her life. And now she knows what I want is God, you know. And, and let's always remember this, brothers and sisters. We're going to fall down so many times in our life and get up. You know, I was talking with Deacon Seraphim on the phone a while ago uh, during, uh, it, was, it was Holy Friday. I was on my way to, to, to uh, liturgy or to Vespers that day on Great and Holy Friday, the burial service. And we were just talking back and forth. And, and we both talked about the fact that we had met each other uh, many, many years ago, 30 years ago or whatever, and how uh, we, we sort of had this idea in the back of our minds that we were going to conquer not all of our sins, but most of them. You know, and, and we could both say to each other, uh, uh, I would say with, with a degree of uh, 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 certainty that we weren't going to. Okay. Then we better just continue to do what? What do we do then? Well, if we can't conquer of all our... Well, maybe the idea of conquering was the, was the wrong idea. What are we going to do then? Well, uh, we, can, we can rely upon one thing that's for certain. And what's that? God's mercy. We better ask for God's mercy because we're certainly not going to win all of these battles and these struggles on our own that we wanted to. Anyway, let me give you the hokey story and then, and then I'll be done. <coughs> it's almost over. <laughs> Father Tom is sitting back there, you know, rolling his eyes. I, think. <laughs> I heard that. Yeah, I don't know. he's awake at least. You know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I guess it was about uh, two or three weeks ago. I, I came to the. I needed to get something from the church because I was going somewhere to serve, and, and so uh, I came to the gate here. This is at Holy Cross. You know, this is about thirst, and uh, the gate was locked. Now, I've been offered a key, but, but I just keep on forgetting to get it, you know, or whatever. And so there it was, and it was kind of uh, in the evening hours, and I, I couldn't uh, get in. And so finally I thought, well, what am I going to do? And I thought, well, I'll just roll under the fence, you know. So, so I thought, after trying to get into the church that I'd served in for quite a few years, I thought, well, I'll just roll under the fence, and, and you know, there's stickers and everything, you, you get up, and you kind of brush yourself off, but I thought, well, I'm in, you know, I'm in, my car's out there, but I'm inside, and I'll have to come back this way, too, because there's this lock on the gate, this good, strong padlock, and as I'm walking toward the church, you know, uh, guess what, the church dog, what's his name, uh, Maestro, Maestro starts coming towards me, you know, as if, you know, you know, kind of friendly, but you're 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 uh, you're a little bit worried. And I'm getting closer to the church, and I and I thought to myself, my gosh, you know, th this is not easy. And then and then finally Valerie came out and started. We started talking, and she said, Oh, uh, I know you. You used to be the priest here. <laughs> she she didn't say that, she didn't say that. but. Uh, Anyway, finally I got inside the church, and as I was driving off later, because she opened the lock and let me go out <laughs> to, to the honorable, the, the, the honorable gate. Maybe I should have been better off spiritually rolling underneath again. But, but it was interesting because as I was doing that, I, you know, I love the beauty of thy house, the place where thy glory dwells. You know, and suddenly I thought, gosh, it's more important for me to get inside that church and say a few prayers and to get my get what I need and, and, and then go, don't, don't drive off. Uh, so uh, humiliate yourself a little bit, you know, let the, let, the, let the dogs chase you away, you know, uh, and not be recognized by, by the ward, the caretaker, the choir director. All of that is good for you, you see what I'm saying. But, but the point being here is that uh, we need to thirst, don't we, brothers and sisters? Never stop thirsting and never stop recognizing what that thirst means. You know, this woman, this Samaritan woman is satisfied finally, right? She's fulfilled. She understands what she's been looking for, and that is uh, the Christ. And now she knows the Christ. And we have that, and that's why the church is here, to know Christ, to know Christ. I saw Donnie to almost raise her hands like this, but, but, she, but, to know, but to know Christ. That's why we're here. Because in knowing him, in communing with him, in being heal healed by him, and asking for his forgiveness, and asking for his forgiveness, we have the Holy Spirit. Okay. All right? Christ is risen. He is risen.
resolve, say with all our soul, with all our mind, let us say. Lord, have mercy. Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our Metropolitan Tikhon, for our Archbishop Benjamin, for priests, deacons, and all other clergy, and for all our brethren in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for this country, its president, for all civil authorities, and for the armed forces. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the blessed and ever memorable Holy Orthodox Patriarchs, for the blessed and ever memorable founders of this holy church, and for all our fathers and brethren, the Orthodox departed this life before us, Proto Deacon Treva, Radu, David, Persevan, Evelyn, Tatiana, Matthew, who here in all the world lies sleeping the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation for the servants of God, all those suffering from coronavirus, Archpriest Ian and Matuska Nina, Archpriest Michael, Archpriest David and Alice, Priest Joseph, St. Stephen One Mission, Deacon Joseph, Deacon Seraphim and Susan, Matuska Priscilla, Joanne, Catherine, Linda, Karen, Alexandra, Jean and Cheryl, Marie, Louis, Andrew, Michaela, Joseph, Curtis, Benny, Mary Lou, Anne, Kent, Olga, Jamie, Gregory, Catherine, Bob, Susan, Elena, Monica, Paul, John, Carol, Margaret, newly born Sophia, newly born Priscilla, Lori, Seminarians Patrick, uh, Devin, with child Vera, Elena, and Svetlana, and for the brethren of this holy temple, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again, we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and all venerable temple, for those who labor and those who sing, for all the people here present, who await thy great and rich mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. O thou art a merciful God who lovest mankind, and unto thee do we send up glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Praise to the Lord, ye catechumens. Let us be faithful to pray for the catechumens, that the Lord may have mercy on them, that he may teach them the word of truth, that he may reveal to them the gospel of righteousness, that he may unite them with the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, save them, have mercy on them, help them, and keep them all God by thy grace. Bow your heads unto the Lord, ye majestic name of the Thank Father, you. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. All catechumens depart, depart catechumens, all that are catechumens depart, let no catechumen remain. Let us, the faithful, again and again in peace, pray unto the Lord. Have mercy on us and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Wisdom. Now to be our due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the
the welfare of the holy churches of God and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For his holy house, for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. on us and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Wisdom. God guard it always by thy might. May send up glory to thee, to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages.
the most blessed Tikhon, Archbishop of Washington, D.C., Metropolitan of all America and Canada. May the Lord our God remember his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. The most reverend Benjamin, Archbishop of San Francisco in the West. May the Lord our God remember his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. For all those in priestly and monastic orders, may the Lord our God remember them in his heavenly kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. The President of the United States, all those in civil authority, those who serve in the armed forces in these times of peril, may the Lord God remember his kingdom always now and ever and unto the ages of ages. For all those who departed this life in true faith and hope of the resurrection, especially remember those who gave their lives in service of this country, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always now and ever and unto the ages of ages. For all those Christians suffering persecution for the faith throughout the world, especially in Africa and the Middle East, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Uh, for all those who are sick and suffering, all those in hospitals, nursing homes, institutions, and the Lord God remember his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and into ages of ages, for the founders and founders and factors of this holy house, for those who labor, and those who sing, for, all, for those who serve, for all those whom we have in our hearts, may the Lord God remember his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. You and all of us, the Lord comes over his kingdom, always known as the ages of ages. Oh. Son, with whom thou art blessed, 
together with thine all holy good and life-giving spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Peace be unto all. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, one in essence, and undivided. The doors, the doors, and wisdom, let us attend. I believe in one the Father
to love this mankind, we also cry aloud and say, Holy art thou, thou holy thou, the only begotten Son of thy Holy Spirit. Holy art thou, thou holy, magnificent is thy glory, who has so loved thy world as to give that only begotten Son, and whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Who, when he had come, had fulfilled all the dispensation for us in the night in which he was given up, or rather gave himself up for the life of the world, took the bread in his holy, most pure, and blameless hands, and we've given thanks, and blessed it, and hallowed it, and broken it, gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Hey, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sin. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Offering unto thee thine own of thine own, on behalf of all and for all. Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. 
Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts now offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God who loves mankind, having received them upon his holy and noetic altar above the heavens as a sweet spiritual fragrance, will send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. That we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant us, O Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful God, a guard of our souls and bodies. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant us, O Lord. Pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant us, O Lord. All things that are good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world. Let us ask, O the Lord, this, O Lord, that we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance. Let us ask, O the Lord, this, O Lord, a Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, and peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ. Let us ask, this, O Lord, Having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. To thee, I make us worthy, O Master, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God, as Father, and to say, Our Father.
Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into this world to save sinners of the mind first. And I believe also to pursue them among the pure body, and to pursue them among the precious blood. Therefore, I pray thee, have mercy upon me, and forgive me my transgressions, both voluntary and involuntary, both worthy of thee, and in knowledge of ignorance, and make me worthy to partake without condemnation of thy most pure mysteries, for the remission of my sins and of life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical suffering, Son of God, accept me today as a communicant, for I will not speak of thy mysteries to thy enemies, neither like Judas will I give thee a kiss, but like the thief will I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, of thy kingdom, and may the need of thy holy mysteries be united to my judgment, nor to my condemnation, Lord, to the healing of the soul and body. Amen.
God, with faith and love drawn near. Sisters in Christ, in order to receive fully from the Orthodox Church, and must be an Orthodox Christian, and should be prepared to prayer, fasting, and a regular tax of confession. Again, there are two lines today with um, the table of the bread and wine afterwards on each side. As you come forward, please still uh, hold one of the paper towels under your chin and place it in the wicker basket afterwards. <laughs>
Let us depart in peace. In the name of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. us those who bless thee and sanctify us those who trust in thee save thy people and bless thine inheritance preserve the fullness of thy church sanctify those who love the beauty of thy house glorify them in return by thy divine power and forsake us not who put our hope in thee give peace to thy world to thy churches to thy priests to all those in civil authority to the armed forces and to all thy people for every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from thee the father of lights and unto thee do we send up glory thanksgiving and worship to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages Amen. blessed be the name It's a, it's a joy to be with you all again on this beautiful Sunday morning before it gets before it gets too hot. Uh, but it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely day. I want to welcome any of, uh, any of the visitors who are here with us. A special welcome also to, to my, my sister-in-law Amy and, and nephews who are here. My mother-in-law Anne as well. 
Um, any other visitors, welcome. Please join us for a coffee hour. Uh, where is the coffee hour this? Coffee hour is in front of the hall today, Okay, in front of the hall, everyone. So the co coffee is in front of the hall. Um, a few congratulations. In order um, the, to this weekend, uh, baby Sophia Honeycutt was baptized in, in Chico. Uh, so m many years and congratulations to baby Sophia for, um, for her, her, her parents and for her, her, her sponsors who were up, who up at the Chico Parish. Um, congratulations also to our, our seminarian, Ryan Patrick Miller, who graduated from St. Ticon's uh, this weekend as well. Um, I got to, I got to talk, talk to Ryan a little bit last week, and uh, he was doing very well. He's actually going to stay out there living a little, a, a little longer, and um, you can ask him uh, more, more about that. But he promises to come visit us this summer as his plans for after seminary are still kind of un unfolding. Um, also, as well, I heard news that another uh, son of our parish, as well as somebody from our the former uh, uh, from UC Davis OCF, uh, Devin Lutzen, had uh, graduated from Holy Cross uh, Hellenic Carl Seminary as well. So we'll sing many years for for, for Devin uh, yeah. uh, as well. So that's a joy, a joy for our parish as well. But both of whom, Ryan and Devin, were from the from the UC Davis o OCF as well, and from the, that Christian fraternity that shall not be, <laughs> I see the, uh, who so many have, have come into the, I see, I see Chris in the back. <laughs> so, um, so glory to God. So uh, the college ministry is very, very important as we, as many of you know. Uh, going to have a look forward to celebrating the last, well, the last few times out here, outside on the weekends before heading back indoors on, on mid-June. Uh, we're going back into the upper room on Pentecost. So. Um, there, there we go. For St. Eugene's camp, it's not too late. I think we're about the last day for registration, last day or two. Uh, deadline is May 31st if you would uh, want to sign up as a camper. I know they were looking for one or two more counselors last week. I'm not sure if they, they found those, but you can always reach out to uh, Kathy Paracci to find out if you're interested. Um, again, uh, uh, just a few more notes because it will be uh, disappearing eventually. Our lost and found bin is in the back here. So you may want to look through it, okay, especially if you lost something. Um, I will note over the last year, we have all the beautiful icons set up, displayed, taking up and setting down. We did have an icon, a beautiful icon of St. Herman uh, disappeared that's lost, or perhaps not lost to, lost to us, uh, necessarily lost. But if anybody's seen the icon of St. Herman, uh, please do, uh, that is a special one, so please do let us know. Got in the woods somewhere. Uh, it could be. You may find it somewhere in, that, you know, in a solitary place. Okay. Um, as, as well, the schedule for this week, uh, adult class today, yes? Yes. Uh, in the hall? Uh, no, I think it's on the grass. Oh, in the grass, okay. Great, so adult class will be in the, in the grassy area by the big tree, continuing with Revelate, Book of Revelation. Um, on Tuesday, we have a food program in the morning and our in end of the year event for the Davis OCF. Uh, instead of the barbecue this year, we're gonna let others barbecue for us. So we'll more information by email, we'll be going out to dinner. Uh, for our end of the year uh, bash at, at seven o'clock, uh, so in in Davis this this Tuesday. Um, on Wednesday we have our vespers and and class uh, in in church, continuing with the class going through uh, explanation of the creed. On um, and then next weekend we have the the usual schedule. Though there's a typo, it's not Sunday of the Samaritan woman again, but of the blind man. Um, that's all the main things again this weekend is also Memorial Day weekend. We remember all those who gave their life in service of our country and for the freedoms that we celebrate as well. So after we sing many years today, we'll sing memory eternal for, for, for all of those who, who died in service of our country. Um, anything else for, okay, for many years, Father Deacon? Yes, on the 31st, we have a birthday, uh, Becca Bakari. On the 1st, Teresa Plevka Petrosky, birthday. On the fourth, uh, names day for uh, Sophia Honeycutt, and on the fifth, a uh, names day for Dorothea Weisbach, and then who? Anybody else? So we have our today are some Fotinis and Svetlanas. So we have. So we um, have uh, Fotini. Fotini, uh, Corinne Fotini, and um, and Svetlana. Okay. We have Mary Fotini. Oh, so we have two Fotinis. Yeah, we have Mary Fotini and Corinne Fotini. Uh, we have Svetlana, uh, which is also relates okay. to the name for light. Um, any other? Uh, yes, John. 
<laughs> uh, what, so uh, John and Lisa's wedding anniversary? Okay. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> all right. Ready? Grant, O Lord, a prosperous, peaceful life, health and salvation, and furtherance upon thy servant. Becca, Teresa, Thea, Dorothea, Patrick, Devin, newly baptized Sophia, Otini, Otini, Svetlana, John and Lisa, and Preserve. Patrick and Devin. Patrick and Devin. Patrick and Devin. Patrick and, Patrick and, Devin. Patrick and, Devin. and preserve them for many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many, many, many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many years.